Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. The National Weather Service. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on this February 14th, Valentine's Day, and it has just been pointed out to me that I have not been wearing any red or pink at all today, so my apologies to the ladies there. I Brown and blue, I guess it's all I could get together today. All right, as always, if you'd like to stay up to date with your latest weather information around Alaska, the very best way to do that uh, is at arh.noaa.gov or weather.gov slash Alaska. We'll get you to the same place now. Weather info lines open at 800-472-0391. Find us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube all day long in between the Alaska weather shows. And in the mid-afternoon, you can get a quick peek at what's going on around uh, the entire state with the statewide weather maps, AKWX TV. If you search that in YouTube, you'll get that daily briefing as well. Here's tonight's hazardous weather across southeast. We have let the warnings and watches drop there across southeast. The advisories are gone as well. We're still going to be dealing with some wind as we go through tomorrow, but the main issue right now is going to be some heavy and wet snow from Cape, weather, uh, Cape Fairweather to Cape Suckling, uh, including Areas around Yakutat, another 9 to th 13 inches possible there as we go through uh, tonight and into uh, the early morning hours of tomorrow. I believe the winter storm warning drops at midnight. We'll see if that's extended. Uh, but during the entire course of the event, I want to say something like 20, maybe 25 inches of snow or so uh, possible around this entire uh, region. So just a tremendous amount of heavy and wet snow. And again, uh, mariners and uh, aviators, you're encouraged to keep that snow cleared off of your vehicle or your, uh, your boat, your airplane or your car. It's going to be pretty hard to uh, keep that manageable uh, if you don't uh, do that every so often during the next uh, 12 hours. Now a little bit further to the west around the eastern Kenai Peninsula and the western side of Prince William Sound, and in this case north of Moose Pass there, so the north of the Sterling Highway, uh, you're dealing with uh, winter weather advisory, also looking at some accumulating snow in that region and blowing snow. So two problems there. Visibility may be poor if you're running up and down the Seward Highway, mainly north of Moose Pass uh, through tonight. North of that, all the orange areas are wind chill advisories. In those regions, the wind's going to be moving enough that it could make that feels like index drop to about 50 below. I got an interesting statistic to share with you here in just a minute about a uh, wind chill that we noticed up around the Brooks Range earlier this morning. So seriously cold stuff there, as you would imagine. Now, up across the north and eastern parts of the Brooks Range, a winter weather advisory continues there uh, for light amounts of snow and mainly blowing wind, reducing visibility in those cases. So it's not just the wind making you feel cold, but it's the wind also impairing your visibility there and uh, perhaps travel if you're around Arctic Village and into the north and eastern parts of the Brooks Range. So an awful lot going on there. Here's the stat I wanted to share with you. This is some amazing stuff here. The Alaska wind chill record uh, will look like it was, well, uh, maybe somewhat in danger earlier this morning. This is of Howard Pass. This is in the western and the northern parts of the Brooks Range there. I believe the uh, closest uh, community is uh, Bettles, perhaps, about 70 miles away, if I got that right. Howard Pass is about 2,000 feet uh, above sea level. And here are the stats. We've got the stats here on the left side of the screen. Around, what was it, 539 this morning, the temperature was 43, dew point 49 below, of course. And here's the relative humidity, 68%. Yeah, it was dry. We know that. Uh, the wind chill, 92 below. That's not a mistake. That's the real deal. North Northeast wind at 49, gusting to 54. The reason we care, besides it's just being really crazy cold, is that 
at 7 a.m. January 28, 1989, the lowest recorded wind chill was 96. But here's a little bit of the rest of the story, uh, talking to Brian Brettschneider, who we've had on the show before, talking about uh, uh, some of the climate stuff, I believe. Um, if you factor in the gust at that time, same day on January 28th, the real wind chill for that gust period there, if you, if you look at that, was actually 102 below. That's gold. Wow, just hurts to talk about. So let's talk about something else. That was really chilly stuff. Here's a look at the uh, western parts of the Bering Sea. We've got a lot of low clouds coming in behind the cyclone across uh, the Kamchatka Peninsula. And you can see how the weather pattern is kind of changing here a little bit. We've got a pretty healthy flow circulating here in the far western Bering Sea and over the Kamchatka Peninsula and a pretty deep northerly flow coming down the west coast. Well, as that continues, we're not going to get rid of the wind chill or the cold. That's all staying put. And this frontal boundary here that's kind of bowing and stretching out trying to work into that northerly, northerly flow is just going to fall apart. So we stay under the same weather pattern as we go through the weekend. Here's our weather maker, this guy right here, this low pressure system sitting just east and north of Kodiak, east of the Barren Islands, and mainly south of the Kenai Peninsula. It's going to kind of wobble around here for the rest of the weekend. As it does so, it's pushing warm, wet, unstable air up and over the southeast. That's keeping the heavier snow going around places like Yakutat, and at times pushing some snow and wind over to the Kenai Peninsula and into parts of Prince William Sound. Uh, as I drove into the studio here, we were seeing scattered snow showers around parts of Anchorage, especially up around the hills. That should continue on and off this weekend without any major accumulation it looks like at this point. And farther north, uh, scattered areas of flurries across the Tanana Valley and then a, mostly just a lot of wind coming in across the Brooks Range and across the west coast. And as that happens, those wind chill advisories will likely stay up again. It could feel like this cold is 50 below, maybe even worse as we saw up there around Howard Pass from earlier this morning. Low pressure, 974 millibars there sitting, well, just almost right over the southern tip of the Kenai. As that happens, a southerly flow again hitting southeast. We've got a frontal boundary sitting across the Alaska Range, and then this is just cold and mostly dry air wrapping around. Occasional bursts of snow there across the interior and the north, and we see some snow and blowing snow around the Privlovs and parts of uh, Dutch Harbor on Alaska. There were blizzard warnings out. Those have been allowed to expire. Frontal boundary also expires as we head into the next 12 hours there. And it looks like rain will be working into parts of southeast. Even places like Juneau could be dealing with a little bit of a rain-snow mix by later tonight and tomorrow. Uh, snow across northern parts of southeast into the Haines and uh, Chilkoot Valleys there around the White Pass region and into the northern parts of uh, the Copper River Basin. But the heaviest snow likely south of the highway there and out toward Glen Allen as you get into Saturday afternoon. Really no major change in the map structure here at all. We've still got a front parked off of southeast. We've got that south and easterly flow coming up over the Panhandle into the Copper River Basin and then probably wrapping around some leftover snow showers there on the western side. Scattered snow showers out across the Gulf, parts of Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula, along that old frontal boundary and waves of low pressure rotating around the north and western side of this. That's going to keep the air moving across the west coast and across the interior. Really the same story for Sunday. Low pressure still there, 979 millibars, strong winds out of, over the open water and through the passes across the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians. Rain and snow may mix across parts of southeast. A little bit further north, that becomes all snow as you head into Prince William Sound, the Kenai Peninsula, the Anchorage Bowl, Matanuska, the Sitna Valleys, and the interior. Places like Fairbanks probably just dealing with fog and flurries from time to time. Surrounding areas dealing with a little bit more wind as you get up and out of the bowl there. A better chance for some accumulating snow up across the north and eastern parts of the Brooks Range, Arctic Village, maybe Fort Yukon dealing with some of that as we head into Sunday. But by and large, most of the activity as far as precipitation will be around the Gulf Coast and the Aleutians, and most of the wind will be across the interior, the North Slope, and the West Coast as we go throughout the rest of the weekend. Here's a look at temperatures now, 30s and 40s across southeast as we get into Prince William Sound, 20s and 30s for the most part around Anchorage, 23 today, Glen Allen, 2 below. Low. Cordova was showing 32 degrees, while uh, places like Anchorage made it up to, I'm sorry, Juneau made it up to 34. Metlakatla, Ketchikan, temps there in the lower 40s, I believe. Metlakatla hit 43 degrees today. Heidelberg was about the same, so some of the warmest temperatures shifting back into southeast where we would normally expect them this time of the year. A little bit farther north, well, you can see the cold settling in there. Temps south of the Brooks Range were as cold as uh, anywhere from 15 to 25 below. And once you got north of the Brooks Range summits, uh, you saw temperatures dive from 20 to as cold as 35 below, like Wayne right there. They're just cold, cold stuff. Point Hope, Point Lay, anywhere from uh, about 5 to 10 below. Kotzebue Sound temperatures, well, Shishmaref was 13 below, th thir 3 below in Nome, 4 below in St. Lawrence Island. The West Coast and the YK Delta, generally 5 to about 10 below. Grayling was 2 below there. McGrath, 8 below. 
in the upper Kuskokoon Valley. A little bit farther south into Bristol Bay where there's ice now working into uh, the Bristol Bay region. Uh, zero in King Salmon today, about the same there in Pilot Point. Teens, 20s for most of the Alaska Peninsula, 29 in Unalaska Dutch Harbor, and mid-30s there for the central Aleutians with St. Paul and St. George checking in around 20. Overnight low temperatures then in the single digits and low teens for south central, southeast, mid to upper 30s, some coastal areas in the lower 40s. As you get into the interior, 20 to 25 below for areas around Fairbanks and the Tanana Valley. Well, once you get up to Anaktuvik Pass, it could be as cold as 40 below. Same goes for Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse. Mighty cold tonight. Around Kotzebue Sound, 15 to 25 below. 20 below in Nome, the YK Delta, 5 to 15 below. King Salmon and King Dilling, or King, yeah, you wish. King Salmon and Dillingham, there we go. Uh, we're 10 to 15 below. Kodiak, about 13 above. And once you get into the Alaska Peninsula, temperatures could hold in the mid-teens. Dutch Harbor, about 24. Those are low temperatures. What about high temperatures? Not a whole lot better for the interior. You'll notice some areas closing in on zero, so maybe a little bit of a warm up. North of the Brooks Range again, you notice temps anywhere from 20 to 35 below. Anaktuvik Pass, one of the cold spots. Upper 30s and lower 40s for most of Southeast. Prince William Sound, slightly warmer tomorrow. 23 in Kodiak and teens and 20s for the Alaskan Peninsula and above freezing for the central and western parts of the chain. Most of the Bering Sea, where you'd like to fly from the Privilofs to, well, just about anywhere in the Alaska Peninsula, will be dealing with uh, IFR conditions. Most of the chain under MVFR conditions. Copper River Basin uh, to about Prince William Sound looking at IFR and then most of the coastal areas in southeast under MVFR and many areas along the middle Yukon and even the upper Yukon will be under MVFR conditions. Without that, you're dealing with VFR conditions, but you're also going to be dealing with turbulence. Anaktuvik Pass and Adigan Pass, we expect to see VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass will see improving visibility throughout the day, but starting out at MVFR. Same goes for Rainy Pass. Should be a breezy day there through that pass area. And for Windy Pass, expect marginal flight conditions throughout the day. Isabel, marginal throughout most of your Saturday. Same goes for Mentasta Pass. And MVFR likely by the end of the day for Tanita Pass, starting out at VFR though. VFR conditions expected for most of the west side of Portage Pass, but if you're coming in from the east side, you should uh, probably expect to see MVFR and MVFR through at least most of Chilkoot and White Pass. Freezing levels, uh, yeah, it's cold out there, and most of the west coast is seeing all that cold air drain into the Gulf. We only have a little bit of those elevated freezing lines showing up just off the shore of southeast and Haida Gwaii, so really no major change there. Icing potential above 5,000 feet in parts of southeast into the Prince William Sound and Copper River Basin, uh, mainly below 12,000 feet. Most of that should be light to isolated moderate, and below 4,000 feet for the southern tip of the Alaska Peninsula out to about the eastern parts of the chain. The jet stream shows us exactly why we're cold. Would you believe that this is the polar vortex and it is hovering right over south central Alaska for the weekend? So tell all of your friends down in the lower 48, hey, we've got the polar vortex back and we know what to do with it. Here's a look at the 9,000 foot winds. You can see that circulation really cruising around the south central and southwestern parts of Alaska right now. Wind speeds anywhere from 25 to about 40 knots on the west coast. Those pick up to 20 to maybe even 50 knots in some places uh, west of Bristol Bay. North and northwesterly winds coming across the Aleutians and you can see that southerly flow working across southeast anywhere from 40 to about 50 knots. A pretty strong north and easterly flow crossing over the Brooks Range summits. So no doubt there's turbulence there and probably dealing with a little bit of uh, added value from that wind chill as we saw up around Howard Pass. So a lot of wind moving through that region. And across the Bering Strait, it looks like uh, places uh, below uh, 3,000 feet and below the Bering Strait at the surface will be dealing with some pretty gusty winds there. 25 to 50 knot winds there at 3,000 feet across the west coast. 20 to 35 knots there, uh, 50 knots there across the central Aleutians, and even stronger winds as you get out into the North Pacific. Low pressure, once again, pretty much in the same old spot around the Kenai Peninsula and cruising in some westerly winds right across Kodiak Island, and a pretty hefty southeasterly flow helping to feed that moisture and wet weather right up the uh, Panhandle Coast into the Wrangell St. Elias and into the eastern parts of Prince William Sound. As we look at turbulence, then, if you factor all that in together and have seen kind of the, the patterns that we've been looking at for the last 24 hours, you probably expect at least occasional to widespread moderate turbulence across any part of the Brooks Range. And there might be an opportunity for some isolated severe, especially below 4,000 feet there. As you're looking at the Yukon Valley, parts of the lower Kuskokoon Valley, again, same problem, occasional to widespread moderate turbulence possible there. Uh, maybe some opportunity for some isolated severe. And then anywhere below uh, 4,000 feet, you're likely going to see at least some isolated moderate 
and uh, light chop there across the Alaska Peninsula, and we still have the gap wind problem going on, so that's not going to change. Around Prince William Sound and uh, eastern parts of the Kenai Peninsula with low pressure right here, you should expect turbulence, especially below 6,000 feet. And with all the wind racing up through the southeast, uh, expect at least occasional moderate, and there might be some opportunities for some severe there as well, and you can see widespread opportunities for turbulence across the far western parts of the chain. A pretty sloppy and windy pattern all over different parts of Alaska, and then you have the visibility issues in more of a limited area. That's a look at your aviation forecast. We'll be back with your marine weather here and a look at the ice edge in just a moment. Good evening, I'm Harry Keeling, and on behalf of Alaska Public Media and the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, welcome to Hangar Flying. Our guest this evening is Joy Jernay. Joy is the, many of you know, she's been on our program before, but she's the executive director of the Alaska Air Carriers Association. Uh, Joy came to Alaska in 2002 and has been with the Air Carriers for five years. Welcome back, Joy. Thank you, Harry. Let's start with your association. Many are familiar with your work, but let's do a quick review. What is the Air Carriers and what, what's their function? We were established in 1966 to advocate for air carriers, anyone who can carry passengers or cargo for hire. So that is um, anyone from Alaska Airlines all the way down to Part 91 operators, hunting and fishing guides, and probably three-fifths of our members are single pilot operators. So large, small, and single pilot yep. operators. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One of the reasons I wanted you to be on the program this evening was you to talk about a special event coming up here. Spring con Convention. Can you talk about that? That is February 17th to the 21st. The main convention is Tuesday through um, Thursday, the 18th, 19th, and 20th. And all day on Tuesday, the 18th, is going to be um, topics that are related to state and local issues. As I said, our group is an advocacy group, so we advocate with the state and local government and with the feds. And so for Tuesday, it's all state and local issues. CTAF, the CTAF issues at the Mountain Passes and the Matsu Borough will be discussed that day. And we will have representatives from the government entities that um, influence those and can be influenced by the carriers. And it's going to be the entire convention is just an open forum for discussion and feedback back and forth from the users and the people who regulate and manage um, our systems. So you're bringing together the people who, the operators and the regulators, and mm -hmm. it sounds like it's going to be a very interesting week. It, it should be. We're excited about the potential to have the, this open dialogue. The regulators see me very, very frequently, but um, they see the big carriers because they have a larger staff. But the small carriers don't necessarily have the time to come to Anchorage and do that. And so combining it with this convention and get every, everyone on site for them, we'll probably have about 50 different regulatory people present on different panels to address different issues. Also on the state issues, we'll be discussing that afternoon everything with the state of Alaska Department of Transportation. So airport planning and protection, the management, um, stuff that's going on with the obstructions and the approaches that is influenced by the state. Then on Wednesday, that day is all federal issues. The morning is all FAA issues. So certification, um, we have about 44 requests into the FAA in Alaska right now for new uh, Part 135 certificates. Those have been backlogged and they have a plan to get those moving and get those through in you know 60 or 90 days. Um, and so they've got a number a goal that they'll push those through every 30 days and um, hopefully have those up and ready you know, by the flying season. Then we also have seen some anomalies in um, inspections and the carriers want to know when do you come in to inspect, what is the protocol, what's acceptable. If I'm turning three planes all at once and I've got 26 tourists backed up, how do I, can I put you off and have you come back tomorrow? Can I? you know, do something. And so we, we want that dialogue for how to make inspections um, also flow smoother. Um, FAA issues also include um, the approaches to airports. I don't 
know if um, some of your viewers have noticed that we probably had six or seven towns you couldn't get into or out of at nighttime this year because of obstructions penetrating the airspace. Um, and that came from outside of Alaska. RFAA local offices were fighting hard on behalf of the villages here and the um, carriers who fly in and out and serve those villages to keep them open. And so it's telling that story and getting that um, buying time to keep sure. those approaches open while we address the special well, waivers. Let me ask you a couple quick so. questions because we're just about out of time. Um, is it, it, any of it open to the public? Um, open to the public free is the trade show. We have uh, more vendors than we've ever had at any of our conventions this year. And from 4 to 7 on Wednesday and Thursday is the trade show. Um, it's an open free happy hour and hors d'oeuvres and refreshing beverages and the vendors are all there. Great. One last question and then I, I, I will wrap it up. Uh, you've got an awards banquet uh, Wednesday night? Wednesday night is our annual awards banquet. That's probably one of the most exciting things we do because we give out scholarships. We anticipate giving out six this year instead of our normal two because we have outstanding applicants. And then Pilot of the Year, Mechanic of the Year, um, Aviation Support, and then two Lifetime Achievement Awards, one um, for um, overall aviation, influencing aviation, and one for lifetime maintenance Great. safety. Now, real quick, um, is there some place they can go for any further information? They can go to our website. It's www.alaskaaircarriers.org and hover over events and click on the convention and there's uh, links to the registration form. Great. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Monday. This is next week. And if you're interested, please go to that website. And um, on Monday, we will actually have uh, uh, Mark Madden in talking about uh, jobs and talking about some of his uh, flying experience. Many of you know Mark. And until that time, fly safe. Thanks, Harry, and we'll see you again on Monday. Today's Sea Ice Edge, as produced by our Sea Ice program at the Anchorage National Weather Service office, shows that there has been some southerly progression in that leading edge. It's now into Bristol Bay. This is not a solid sheet, but the concentration is increasing there. And then south of Nunavak Island, south of the St. Matthew Island waters there, and here are the Pribilovs if you're keeping track. So that's the latest analysis. You can check that out anytime you like by going to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice.php and you can download the file that I use to make this map. And you can certainly check on the sea ice outlook as well as the current conditions there around anywhere in the Bering Sea and across the Arctic, of course. Also looking at Cook Inlet there, uh, north of even south now of Kenai, uh, you can see the ice is progressing along that area. Thanks to the cold and certainly uh, the winds moving through the region, it's pushing that ice edge a little bit further south. So again, the very latest there on our website, weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice, or you can look for the ice desk link on the left-hand side of your screen. Now, as we were talking about earlier, in the southeast, a pretty hefty wind, storm force winds, in fact, moving up the southeastern coast, not only on the uh, coastal areas, but in the inner channels. We're going to be looking at some stronger winds, 40 knots there across the southern inner channels with 11 to 13 foot seas coming up through the day, 35 knot winds there across uh, Stevens Passage and Frederick Sound, S uh, seven foot seas are expected. The northern canals around Lynn Canal, uh, looking at northerlies at 30 knots with a six foot sea, but improvements to be had on Sunday very quickly. The winds subside, a uh, southerly flow shifts to about 15 to 20 knots, 12 to 14 foot seas there, uh, two to four foot seas across parts of the inner channels. They're all looking at southeasterlies around 20 knots. So quick improvement, but Saturday looks to be a pretty blustery day across southeast. Now across Saturday in south central, northerlies coming down the Cook Inlet, northwesterlies coming across the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay area and Kodiak Island, 15 to 25 knots. A variable flow just outside of Resurrection Bay and Seward, northeasterlies inside Prince William Sound, southwesterlies outside of Prince William Sound, all because low pressure is sitting right here at the surface, really stirring things up. As you get into Sunday, a little bit of improvement looking at a south and southeasterly flow coming into Prince William Sound. Southerlies return to the uh, Seward coastal areas. A northerly flow coming down Cook Inlet. Again, a two foot seas only in the ice free waters, of course, and westerlies diminish to about 15 to 20 knots coming across Resurrection Bay and the Barren Islands. 20 knots east of Kodiak with a seven foot sea. So some improvement again on Sunday. Northwesterlies coming across the Alaska Peninsula around 25 knots or so in all areas. You know, we've dropped the uh, uh, 
wave heights there across Bristol Bay because of the ice concentration now. Northwesterlies with freezing spray coming into the northern side of the Alaska Peninsula. And northwesterlies around 25 knots with 7 to 10 foot seas on the Pacific side. Still expecting higher gusts in the area. And north and westerly winds still moving over the Alaska Peninsula on Sunday with 10 foot seas there north of Cold Bay and north and westerly winds on the Pacific side with 8 to 10 foot seas there still looking at higher gusts. Across the Aleutians now, a north and westerly wind curving back into low pressure in the Gulf. That means 20 to 35 knot winds with 10 to uh, 13 foot seas there across the north and 15 to 17 foot seas there around the central Aleutians with a broad westerly flow coming across the western and central areas. You're looking at 10 to 14 foot seas there as we get into Unalaska, Atka and Adak uh, from east to west and then 25 to 30 knot winds there across the west central parts of the chain. North and westerlies on the Pacific side looking at 11 to 13 foot seas with winds around 25 to 30 knots. So still looking at some uh, stronger winds there through the weekend. Northerly flow comes out of the Bering Strait and hustles southward as we go through Saturday across the west coast. Not only does that mean some dangerous wind chills, but it's also going to help advance that ice edge a little bit further south. South of that edge, of course, we're still watching for freezing spray. Wind speeds typically 20 to 35 knots. 12 foot seas around St. Matthew through the weekend. 40 knot winds there pick up on Sunday. And northwesterlies around the Pribilofs with a 12 foot sea and 30 knot winds from the north and west on Sunday. Across the Arctic coast, northeasterly winds from Kaktovik all the way out toward Cape Lisburn. 15 knots or so around uh, parts of the Beaufort Sea Coast, around the Chukchi Sea Coast, 10 to as much as 35 knots there off of Cape Lisburn and Point Hope. Northerlies around Kotzebue Sound, that continues for Sunday. Northeasterlies pick up speed a little bit from Barrow down toward Point Lay. And east and northeasterly flow continues for the Beaufort Sea Coast. Recapping tonight's weather, heavy snow is possible around Yakutat, Cape Fairweather and Cape Suckling tonight. A winter storm warning is in effect there until at least midnight. Rain and snow may develop from more places in southeast as we head into the next 24 hours. It still looks like a wet and unsettled period for you. Occasional snow showers working around the north and western side of the low pressure that will be parked in pretty much the same place all weekend. And a winter weather advisory north of Moose Pass for the eastern parts of the Kenai Peninsula and parts of Prince William Sound. Snow and wind and cold for the rest of Alaska. We'll see you again tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan.